artificial intelligence. It's everywhere. It's scary. It's going to wipe out humankind. Long the province of sci-fi and Hollywood, we've suddenly been dropped in the middle of a true existential crisis. Old-fashioned, rule-based AI had struggled with little success for decades, but propelled with machine learning, AI has begun explosively disrupting every sphere of our work and lives. Cambridge Analytica and fake news spots, AI-driven social media displacing traditional journalism, drone warfare, elimination of traditional jobs, privacy violations in advertising, biased AI decision algorithms and recognition algorithms, deep fakes, autonomous vehicles, automated hedge fund trading, no area remains untouched. Policy think tanks and government officials around the world have started paying serious attention to AI ethics. How will we humans survive the rise of AI? What are the new rules? What are the new ethics needed to avoid extinction? Everybody is suddenly asking these questions. But largely, they're just tweaking the existing order, trying to preserve the status quo, more or less. And these tweaks, well, they're simply far too incremental to work. So what on earth do we do then? Well, a modern AI-inspired mindset may quite well be the only possible effective solution to a problem that's being created by AI. And it turns out, there are three crucial lessons for AI ethics to learn from the success of modern machine learning AI. First, collect unbiased big data and do data analysis. We need to learn from the mistakes that AI made in processing things like natural human language. For decades, natural language processing stumbled around, driven by philosophical arguments about how language works, with hardly any empirical testing of hypotheses upon big data. These philosophical theories were heavily influenced by prescriptive linguistics, which prescribe how language should work instead of actually describing how language does work. Remember your grammar school teachers? Don't dangle prepositions at the end of your sentence. Don't say, who did you eat with? Say, with whom did you eat? For too many decades, the field focused too much on formulating universal truths to proclaim without verifying them empirically on statistically significant amounts of data about how humans actually use language across our huge variety of cultures. You know, AI didn't really start succeeding at natural language processing until a small group of us switched to instead emphasize empirical, big data-driven statistical methodologies. Testing your theories upon large amounts of real data is good descriptive linguistics. Guess what? People really do say, who did you eat with? And they communicate quite well that way. We could have saved decades of painful, costly failure if we had focused on the hard work of describing all the rich variety of subtle contextual variation across human language use before leaping prematurely to trying to prescribe the universal truths of language. And if we make that same mistake in AI ethics, the costs will be far more painful. We need to do a lot more descriptive ethics before leaping to prescriptive ethics. Because there's such wide variation and diversity between different cultures and societies, evolved over centuries and millennia, one of the United Nations prescriptive human rights says that everyone should have the right to freedom of opinion and expression. And this right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. But what if your culture is still adjusting to a cruel history of race-based genocide? Does it not work for Germany? to ban social media posts inciting Nazi hatred and violence. How else has Germany come so far in re-educating its culture? Cultural norms matter. Do the groundwork respectfully before proclaiming universal truths. If there are universal truths, they will be meta-values. Values like the ethic of reciprocity. It's commonly known as the golden rule. Treat others as you would like others to treat you. 
Descriptive ethics truly does find this in every major religion across all cultures. With the global exponential scale of AI social disruption, no theory before data approach to AI ethics stands any remote chance. The second lesson for AI ethics is that rule-based approaches alone won't cut it. We need to do constrained optimization instead of only mechanically following rules. In your mind, what is AI? Is it something like Star Trek's Mr. Data or The Terminator? Unable to understand emotion, creativity, context? Speaking like this in a flat, stilted, monotone, bound to strict logical thinking, saying things like affirmative or negative instead of just yes or no? Does not compute? Funny, yeah. But these typical Hollywood stereotypes of AIs as logical rule-based machines are completely inaccurate today. Those Hollywood cliches are based on a 1960s, 70s, 80s approach to AI that was based on mathematical logic, like conventional programming languages, where you manually write algorithms that are encoded using logical rules. If you try to build AI that way, of course it's going to have problems. That's why rule-based AI failed, because reality is not rule-based. Self-driving AI technology is struggling with many variations of an ethical dilemma called the, tro the trolley problem. So you have a speeding vehicle. It's headed straight for a crowd of people on a road. The AI can save all the people by steering off the road, but then it will likely kill the driver. What is the rule it should follow? If there is a baby in the car, does that change things? What if the crowd of people are all terminally ill patients with only weeks to live anyhow? As soon as we start dealing with any problems in the real world, massive amounts of messy realities emerge. Conflict between competing principles, contradictions between rules, inconsistencies between different laws, cultural biases, extenuating circumstances, exceptions to the rule, exceptions to exceptions to the rule, and so on. Rules don't really exist in the real world. We humans made up the notion of a rule, just like we invented fairy tales or games. Rules are an illusion, a useful metaphor. Physicists have long known that classical Newtonian physics, based on fairly simple deterministic rules, is only an approximation. Modern physics makes, predi Modern physics makes predictions in far more probabilistic ways. The real world is full of ambiguities, unpredictability, context, uncertainty, shades of gray. If I say to you, the astronomer shot a star, does that mean the astronomer killed a celebrity? Or that the astronomer photographed a celestial body? For many frustrating decades, Rule-based AI researchers never even came close to succeeding in writing enough rules to handle all such things. And that is why rule-based AI was so brittle, so unscalable. In the face of paradox, optimization is the only sustainable way forward. The way machine learning overtook old-school rule-based AI was to take seriously the need to posit objective functions and measure the quality of predicted outcomes. Machine learning-based natural language processing AI descriptively analyzes large amounts of English data, real data, and learns to measure the probability that the astronomer shot a star means the astronomer killing a celebrity versus shooting a picture of a celestial body. And moving past those oversimplistic rule-based systems is why AI translation and dialogue assistance have recently gotten so much better. The same healthy dose of emphasis on predicting outcomes and consequences is now needed in AI ethics. This is what philosophers call consequentialist ethics. A lot of people casually think of ethics as a set of rules, but rule-based ethics is only one approach that philosophers call deontological ethics. 
I mean, rules are important to have, but it's nowhere near enough. Because it's not just the explosion of paradoxes and contradictions and inconsistencies that we create by trying to write rules to cover all the cases where AI can be abused. AIs are superhuman at finding loopholes in any rule-based system. And the more rules you have, the more loopholes there are to exploit. Finding loopholes is exactly the kind of rule-based inference that mechanical logic-based machines are far better than humans at, like chess or algebra or following computer algorithms. And the more we try to create additional rules for all the ways AI can be used, the more loopholes we create for AIs to exploit. If AI is simply built upon a freedom of expression rule, then what are the unintended consequences? Following the rule blindly, AI would propagate all fake news, all hate speech. It would transmit terrorist and criminal, criminal trafficking communications. Simply proceeding with rules in blind faith that the human consequences will be just fine without doing our absolute best to predict consequences, both intended and unintended consequences, that is one of the most unethical things that we can do. I mean, we can never be certain in advance, but it is unethical not to do our best to try. The third lesson for AI ethics is to scale the optimization via distributed processing. Machine learning was long bottlenecked by the overwhelming computational complexity of constrained optimization. And what saved machine learning was the same thing that enables human brains to succeed. The fact that computation can be decentralized. Our brains operate through parallel, distributed processes. Each of our gazillions of neurons performs the right thing locally and learns to, over time to do the right thing locally. None of your neurons actually understands the whole picture. Modern machine learning adopts the same decentralized approach to succeed. Both probabilistic and artificial neural network models rely on massive numbers of small probabilistic units that optimize their own decisions and learn over time. And of course, there's a lot of trial and error, especially at the level of each individual unit. It's impossible to perfectly predict the right choices given all the complexity. But the key is that each individual is trying its best to learn how to react in unpredictable, new complex situations so as to help improve the outcomes at the global level. And because each of the massive numbers of individuals is constantly trying to learn to do the right thing, an otherwise completely intractable optimization problem can actually be solved. The complexity of AI ethics cannot be overcome without learning this same lesson. AIs are giving each of us an exponential amount of power. In physical space, robotics are entering mass markets in leaps and bounds. In thought and opinion space, social media and the internet are exponentially amplifying individual voices. And we're seeing rapid weaponization of these amplified human abilities, both physically and in weaponization of information. AI is democratizing weapons of mass destruction. It's long been said across many cultures that with great power comes great responsibility. When AI is handing all of us individuals unprecedented exponential power, the only way for humankind to survive is for each of us to also assume exponential responsibility. And what is worrisome is that even with all the talk lately about AI ethics, Everybody is pointing fingers at big tech, at governments, at international organizations. You still don't hear anybody pointing out this crucial survival requirement. From Aristotle's virtues to the Buddha's paramitas to Confucius's de, emphasizing responsible individual character is what philosophers call virtue ethics. Virtues like humanity, rightness, generosity, propriety, wisdom, courage, Honesty, renunciation, loving kindness, and so on. All individuals must constantly, in parallel, be virtuously undertaking the distributed, decentralized work of learning to do the right thing in unpredictable, new, complex situations. Only then can we solve the otherwise intractably complex optimization problem of humankind surviving AI. Ironically, perhaps, surviving the exponential technology era is what will force us back to the most traditional humanistic schools of virtue ethics.
a massive population-wide ethical shift is almost unthinkably hard. But we simply cannot afford the blind hubris of prescriptive, rule-based approaches. Three decades of progress in AI were lost because we failed to recognize their limits. We cannot survive three decades of exponentially hyper-accelerated AI social disruption and polarization that we are now already encountering. Perhaps what we need is AI that helps us exponentially amplify our consequentialist and virtue ethics capabilities to help us be consciously aware of the consequences of our unconscious oversights and failings, to remind us of the virtues we must each individually aspire to. Humankind, described across all our many diverse cultures, and not prematurely prescribed only a single universal truth. Humankind has one shot at growing up and surviving the AI era, because with exponential power, each of us has exponential responsibility. Thank you. <laughs>